In a series of videos, we are going to be discussing some of the molecular diagnostic techniques that a lot of doctors use to diagnose several diseases. Why is molecular diagnosis or even diagnosis for that matter important? Well, because unless the doctor knows what the disease exactly is, they cannot start the treatment for the disease in the patient. So, the sooner the disease is diagnosed, the sooner the patient can start receiving treatment for the disease. Using molecular diagnostic techniques, a lot of infections like SARS-CoV-2, HIV, hepatitis and HPV can be diagnosed in patients, especially in patients that do not exhibit any signs and symptoms of the disease. Such people are known as asymptomatic patients and they don't exhibit the common signs and symptoms associated with these diseases. But the thing is they can still transmit the diseases to others. So which makes it even more dangerous because they are unaware that they have the disease and they may just go about transmitting it to several others around them. Which is why diagnosing these diseases is very important as early as possible. But why do we have to rely on molecular diagnostic techniques and not on the traditional methods of diagnostics like blood tests, urine tests or saliva or sputum tests? You see, a lot of the asymptomatic people that have the disease but they don't show the disease is because their blood has very low quantities of pathogens. And these low quantities of pathogens cannot be detected by these traditional diagnostic methods. They need a more precise, more accurate, more sensitive method of detection, which is why we're going to use molecular diagnostic techniques to detect these diseases. Also, a lot of these traditional methods take a long time for the results to come out, by which time the patient has worsened and the treatment plan is going to be delayed. So that's why a lot of the doctors these days, they prefer using molecular diagnostic techniques compared to the traditional diagnostic methods. So what are the molecular diagnostic techniques that we're going to be talking about for a while? In this video, we'll focus on polymerase chain reaction or PCR. In another video, we'll focus on ELISA. If you want a refresher on the steps involved in polymerase chain reaction or PCR, you can go check out our video on PCR. But here I'll be just talking about it briefly. So PCR is basically involved in amplifying DNA present in the sample. So how does it amplify DNA? When we start off the PCR reaction, we start with one molecule of DNA and then we're going to add TAC DNA polymerase, which is a heat resistant polymerase, the nucleotides needed for new strand synthesis and DNA primers. So the first step is going to be denaturation where the strands are going to split up into two. And then the primer is going to come and bind to the separated strands of DNA and it's going to start replicating the new DNA in both the strands, which is going to give us an amplified DNA. So the trick here is to use the correct DNA primers for our diagnostic needs. If we want to diagnose a bacterial infection, then we know a specific sequence of bacterial DNA. And if the bacterial DNA is present in the sample, then it confirms that the patient has the disease. So we use DNA primers specific for this sequence of bacterial DNA. So only if this DNA sequence, this bacterial DNA sequence is present, the DNA primer, which is complementary, to this sequence, this is going to go bind to that specific sequence of bacterial DNA and then it's going to start the synthesis of the new strand. So after the primer has annealed to both the strands, then the next step is extension of the primers. On both strands, the primer is extended and after one cycle, we get two molecules of DNA. So we started off with one molecule of DNA. Now we're ending up with two molecules of DNA after one cycle, which means the number of DNA has exponentially increased. And we're going to do this 35 to 40 times so that the quantity of DNA in the sample increases exponentially. This is especially useful if we don't know whether the person has the disease or not, but we're suspecting it, but it's not showing up on regular test results. So we can amplify the DNA sample to get the results that we want. So now there's a question here. We've performed PCR, okay. But how will we know if the amplified DNA is present in the sample vial or not? 
we'll just have a solution a mixture of some sorts in the vial right in the tube how do you know if the dna if the amplified bacterial dna is present or not we are going to need some methods to visualize the dna present and also some methods to quantitatively estimate how much of the dna is present how do we do that how do we visualize the dna one method that is commonly used in diagnostic techniques is adding fluorescent dyes now what are fluorescent dyes fluorescent molecules are something that will glow right so we're going to add to the pcr sample itself we're going to add fluorescent tagged nucleotides so if the nucleotide is a g c whatever it will be tagged with the fluorescent molecule if the specific bacterial dna sequence is present and the dna primer goes and binds to that bacterial sequence only then will these fluorescent molecules be attached to the newly growing strand so this way we can analyze the fluorescence of the sample computers and other techniques can be used to analyze the fluorescence of the sample and if the dna has amplified if the specific sequence is present and if the dna has amplified then we would get a lot of fluorescence in the sample the amount of fluorescence will tell us the concentration of dna in the sample which means that more of these nucleotides have been incorporated into the amplified strands which means that there is more concentration of dna another method uses gel electrophoresis so if you're not familiar with gel electrophoresis i suggest you check out our video on gel electrophoresis so what this does is that we're going to use agarose gel and then use it to separate the dna fragments based on their size so we have this agarose gel set up we're going to make small wells here in which we're going to load the dna before we load our sample dna we're going to take a marker dna sample so what this marker dna sample has is it has known dna fragments of pathogens specifically the pathogens that we're testing the sample against so if it's a bacterial pathogen that we're testing in the sample then we're going to have dna fragments of that bacteria so we're going to load the marker dna which has these dna bits of bacteria and we're going to run the electrophoresis setup because dna is negatively charged the dna is going to move towards the positive end the smaller bits of dna are going to move longer distances whereas the larger bits are going to stay right here now why is this marker dna important because they are going to act as a standard or a comparison against which we can compare our sample dna so that's what we're going to do next we're going to load our dna that we've obtained from pcr the dna sample and then we're going to see if there are matching bands against this marker dna let's say that this specific band of dna is what we're looking for this presence of this dna band tells us that this bacterium is present and once we load our sample dna and let the setup run we see that from this sample we get a band right here so this band matches with the band that is already existing in the marker dna which suggests a positive result if there is no matching band if the band is formed here but we are looking for this specific band then that indicates a negative result so these are some methods that are commonly used to diagnose a lot of diseases not just pathogenic diseases but this gel electrophoresis can be used to detect the presence of several cancers because the cancers are caused by mutated genes right so we're going to load the dna containing those mutated genes and check against a marker dna of several mutated genes that's going to tell us the specific type of cancer that is present in the patient and also to you know detect the presence of genetic disorders they can also be diagnosed using pcr and gel electrophoresis we'll end this video right here We'll pick up the next video where we're going to talk about Elisa.